that part, yeah. Uh, what Richard is going to talk to you about, Richard is on the music commission with me. Uh, we have we're from 15 or 18 people on the music commission. And uh, Richard is one of those people. Um, I'll let Richard introduce himself if you can't hear me too well. But what he's going to tell you about is how to package your plans, how to talk the language of money when it comes to raising money or borrowing. Good evening. We all? We good? All right. Um, my name is Richard Williams. I am, uh, my undergrad is in finance and economics, and I have a law degree. Uh, I worked for the state. I was assistant attorney general for 15 years, and now I'm general counsel for an investment bank called Cruz & Associates. We are a bond financing shop, and we're owned by a commercial investment bank. So I've done commercial lending and loan stuff and grant stuff and kind of all. So. Um, what I what I what, what I wanted to, what John asked me to tell you about is okay, y'all everybody's everybody's got a project that they're working on right because you just did your plans for it all right you got this great project I'm sure in your minds it's a great project or you wouldn't have you know that wouldn't be your project and you have a great marketing plan you have that you have all this kind of stuff but most of the time if you can't convince somebody else that it's a great project and a great plan what's the point I mean you may have the best project in the world but if you can't produce it what's the deal. Um, Keep in mind, there are two, you, you've, got, you've got to be able to convince, now wh this is whether you're getting a loan or a whether you're getting a grant or applying for tax credits or applying for whatever or applying for a commercial loan or applying for tax-free bonds. We're going to go over tax-free bonds, which is an a avenue probably you haven't thought too much about. Is this on? They can hear? Uh, it's uh, it, recording. It's just recording. Oh, okay. okay. It's not amplifying. Your no, 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 I'm good. I just want to make sure they can, they can hear. Um, I want to talk about tax-free bonds because are, mo are most of the projects art or mostly art? Mostly to do with music. Art and music oriented. Okay, because a lot of times the arts sometimes get you can you can do different things with arts financing. There's two things you got to be you got to convince somebody verbally. The, your your first thing into the door is you're going to walk in and they're going to go up to you and they're going to say, "Hi, I would like to talk to you about financing my plan." Great. What is your plan? You've got about two minutes. To, to your initial thing to tell them this is my plan. I mean, you've got, you got, because you know, as a, as a commercial loan officer or as a bond guy, we get hundreds a day. And if you go in and you say, well, um, I'm kind of, uh, um, about the third, um, they're done. It doesn't even matter what the project is. So there's a couple of things. One, your introductory statement. What are you doing? Specifically, what are you doing? Two, What's your plan? And three, how are you going to pay the money back? And actually, three is the most important because for a loan person, at the end of the day, at the end of the, after you've gotten past one and two and they're convinced you can pay the money back, they no longer care what one and two are. You've got to pay the money back. So that's kind of what we're going to go over. And y'all feel free to stop and ask questions at any time. Um, just to let you know, whoops, well, that wasn't good. Yeah. We just did a project, we, we just financed a YMCA building in Baton Rouge, you know the YMCA, okay. This was their loan application for the YMCA. Just, I mean, to let you know what you're looking at, if you're expecting someone else to give you their money, this is the amount of stuff that they're gonna wanna see from you. This is marketing plan, financial plan, this best case plan, worst case plan, this is uh, financials, this is audits, this is it, bios for the key people. That, I mean, and this is for a YMCA that everybody knows about. You who are going in and they don't know, I mean, everybody knows YMCA, right? That's a piece of cake. You just go in. This is what they had to, this, this was, I mean, we just financed this for them. It was $10 million, and this was their final financing package. Did it work? They, yes. They, they got, yeah, they are. Now, this, what, this is, th about this much of it was, about this much of it was their initial application, and then we had to supplement it with about this much of it. And then our agreements that we made them sign are about this much of it. But at the end of the day, this is my file for that project. So just to kind of give you an idea visually, I cannot tell you how many people come into our office with four pages and say, I need $600,000, and they give you four pages. And you're thinking, really? I mean, you know, <laughs> like you seriously, you, like this is seriously all I need to know about? Okay, so step one for your plans is going to be, a very succinct, 
I am. Who's what? What's your what's your project? Uh, it's a music industry specialty video production company. Music industry specialty video production company. What are you specifically going to do? You're gonna uh, you you need you need money for for what? Uh, I don't know my elevator speech for that. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, just produce videos uh, like music videos, long form music videos, promotion okay. videos with deliverables for uh, independent bands. Okay, and questions. who's your who's your client base gonna be? Uh, I don't know. I'm still figuring that. Okay, well that, you, which, which you would figure out before you went in, and how's the money gonna be paid back? People are, well you know, yeah sure you know, people are gonna rent your space, right? It's a studio, people gotta rent it, right? So what you say is, my, he's, he's this is this, he's gonna figure out his target client base, and the money's getting paid back with people renting his, rent, renting his space. How many people, the ne then, 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 and we're gonna get into all this, but then the next question is, how many people need your rent your, okay, I need $200,000. How many people need to rent your space per week or per month or per year or per whatever to, and at what rate do they need to rent it to pay back the, 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 the payment? Okay, I mean this is all, you're asking somebody to give you their money. So I, I cannot even, I'm gonna be a broken record, I cannot tell you how many times we come in and somebody will go, I need, I need $600,000 and they hand me this. I mean, this is my speech outline for tonight. I mean, they, and they literally, they, and, and then, they're, then they're stunned why we don't give them the money because this is what they handed us, to, you know. So I'm, very, I'm glad to see that y'all are doing marketing plans. Um, anyway, that having a plan, if you can convince somebody, the bank, people like me who do this, I can, we can take, as long as you, you have to, as long as you believe in your project, you have a definite plan, and you have a clue how the money's getting paid back, we're going to listen to you. But you got to have all those things because anyway, um, you got to have you need you need to have an outline for them. You need to get you need, you need to show them like a couple of page synopsis, and then you need to turn like in the tabs. You know this was this was their first deal, their table of contents, and then oh I need to see more of this, and you can flip back into tabs. Um, you know, you need to, you need to have your outline, and then you need to have your full plan of all that. Um, there, there there's kind of a thing. In the industry, we call it the skin in the game factor. What do you have at risk? So, okay, so the money doesn't get paid back. What do you have at risk? What are you putting into it? Well, I'm students. You, you know, your students you probably don't have any money to put in it. What are you? What is your project? Uh, yep, yours, yours. Design company. Design company to design what? Okay, an independent design company. And what, what, are you, what, what are you gonna have at stake in the company? So if it doesn't get paid back, what do you lose in the deal? Exactly, so what's her incentive to pay it back? Well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You gotta show that you have, and I know you're students, you don't have a lot of money, but if, if, if you have $4,000 in the bank and it's at risk, or if you put in X, or if you borrowed, or if you, if you can show, because I'm, go, I'm assuming, I mean, unless, unless John has got some incredibly just amazing people, which I know you all are amazing, I'm assuming this will be y'all's first intro into getting loans and stuff. And by the way, on the other side of it, I have a, a property management company, and I remember going in on my very first, I, I did an old property that I had to rehab, and I remember going in on my first one, and I made every mistake that I'm telling you. The first bank guy was like, okay, go home, and when you get a plan, come back and see me. So just, I've been there, done that, but um, anyway, so, but I'm assuming this is everybody's first thing, right? Okay, good deal. Um, when, at the end of the day, you, it, would, would you put your money, because what, what you got to convince me is, would you, if, I, if, if, it, if, if you were talking to you, and you were talking to you, would you put, if, if, if somebody said, here's $100,000 you just inherited, would you put your money into his project? I mean, he's got to, you know, that's what you got to say. Well, I'm not going to invest in this. Well, then, you know, if you're, if you're not going to invest in it, we're not either. I mean, as complicated as, as loans and stuff are, at the end of the day, you got to convince the guy that's given the loan that your project is worth getting the loan. However, you got to do that. Okay. Um, big, huge thing for music, music and arts type projects. Assume, you can assume, that the banker or the person there, one, has absolutely no idea what a recording stage or a video or whatever it is, has no idea whatsoever what that is. 
So somewhere in your plan that you're going to turn into, to, they call you John or Mr. Snyder? Uh, they call me whatever. They call it what, what, when you turn into him, there, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it's going to be an explanation, which you probably have already done, of what exactly it is you're doing. Because in here, y'all are all familiar, oh, there's sound stages, there's recording studios, all this kind of stuff. We actually got a call, I'm like I said, I'm on the music commission, and um, about somebody wanting to do a sound stage. So I, I packaged that up and I, I ran that up our flagpole to our commercial lenders and they were all like, what's the sound stage? I'm thinking, dude, it's a sound stage. Like, if you, like, you know, you produce, no, had no idea, what a, no idea what a sound stage was. What do you do with it? You mean, you, you mean like the Beatles can go record? Well, I mean, it's serious. So, you know, that, that's cool. They're going to play their instruments, but what does that have to do with borrowing money? So assume you, you, you all, because you've been in here, know, know the art of of the art and music as a business, the average person doesn't, the average person thinks art and music is fun, go play on the corner, art and music, you're gonna, you know, that's great, you did a CD and you're gonna, you, you had, your band's gonna do a CD down at Tipitina's or something, that's great, but they're not gonna at all appreciate or understand until you tell them that art and music is a business. So you gotta get them, you gotta educate them on what is the business of your project. What is your project? Okay, and what are you? What are you going? What is your? What are you going to consult? And uh, we work with artists who are experiencing growth plateau to come up with business development strategies and market fit plans. Excellent. And what? What? Um, what are you? What, what, who's your? Who's your target market? Well, that is your target market. Who? Uh, how? How much? What would you say you charge them per? Uh, anywhere from twelve hundred dollars a month up to two thousand dollars a month. Excellent. What well, do you? Do you have experience in that already, or yeah. really, what? What have you? Um, we've worked with like a local college artist in Pigman and brought uh, very good. his online presence. Okay. Very good. See, he's, I, I, I mean, I really didn't really, you know, other than consulting you get, but you got to, he knows, he knows his stuff. He's willing to, you know, so you, you see, I mean, you got, you got to convince the, you got to convince me that, you know, or not me, but, you know, convince the banker. Um, Art, arts and music projects, again, are hard. People, bankers understand real estate, they understand stock, they understand, but most of them did not come from an arts or music background. So just, I cannot, probably the most important thing for you is to convince them, and that's more of a just, you got, you got to convince them and show them where your project is a business rather than an art. Because at the end of the day, it's the business that's going to pay the money back, not the artistic. Now, obviously, you, that's how you're making your money, but that is a that is a threshold that well, John knows from. I mean, be, it's hard when when he says when John tells people I teach, you know, I teach people how to do music business. I mean, their first thing is you know, John's behind with the guitar playing, teaching. I mean, seriously, they, you know, isn't it right? And and you have to like get and like on the music commission, they go. I'll say, well, I'm on the Louisiana music. Oh, I didn't know you played an instrument. I don't. I, I, we finance music projects. Oh, I didn't know you played an instrument. I don't play, I mean, I do, but you know, I mean, I, no, that's not why I'm on it. I'm on it because our company finances music projects. You mean like you make CDs for people playing? I'm serious. That, I mean, this is like, it's, it's just unreal. People do not understand the business of music. So that's, that's going to be your job to educate them. Um, you need to have very, very specific and firm projections on how many, pe how many people are you going to consult, how many people are you going to rent to, what's the capacity of your stage, who's, uh, what's, your, what's your project? Me? Yes, yes. Uh, it's a music uh, band. Y'all you're gonna, you're gonna, are going to pro like produce CDs or? or yeah, CDs. Okay, so you're, ac you're actually going to perform. Mm -hmm. Okay, see I understand his. He's, he's actually going to perform. So what, what would you need money for? Okay. Okay. So that that well that his is a little bit more for the for the just the common head mind to understand. You can kind of wrap your hand around that a little bit more. But um, okay, firm projections. So you need to know how like how how many how many hours per week am I planning on having my stage um, filled, or how much per hour can I charge on the stage? Well, what if it's a high school group and somebody comes to you and wants to do discount? Are you going to have discounts, or is it all going to be the same price and are you going to do any charitable stuff? Are you going to, how many weeks a year? When's your busy season? I mean, th th you know, you, you got to, you, you know all this in your head for whatever your project is, but they have no idea. So all this, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to, you got to give them, give them firm deals. Um, you got to give them firm, very firm. I'm going to rent my stage. I'm going to try to average, 
you know, 60 hours a week at $40 per hour. And I figure, you know, everybody's not going to pay because musicians, somebody's going to, well, you know, I'm running late or behind the rent, whatever. So you got to figure 10% bad debt that you're not going to collect. And so this is how much I project I'm going to make a month. And these are my expenses. And this is what's left for debt service. And that what's left for debt service needs to add up to how much you borrow. I mean, you know, if your payment's $400 a month, then what's left for debt service kind of needs to be five or 600 a month. Because what they're going to say is, well, you're from New Orleans. Well, what happens if Katrina hits again? Well, I need to have, a, you know, I need to have, well, you know, you're like, well, that's probably not going to happen. Well, for the bank, if, if you're in New Orleans and you're doing a project, and I'll just tell you, I'm talking like, like Jefferson Parish. I mean, we, we do work for like Livingston Parish, and Livingston Parish is north of, I mean, that's like Baton Rouge. And we went up to Standard & Poor's with them um, two weeks, about two months ago to get a project rated by Standard & Poor's. And Standard & Poor's said, well, what happens if Katrina hits again? What's the parish going to do? Well, first of all, that parish is so far north. But if you're, if you're in South Louisiana, you better, be, you better have an answer. In fact, that needs to go in their plan. What, what's your, what's your worst-case contingency plan if something happens and you're shut down for three weeks? In fact, I would encourage that to be a point in their, in their financing plan is worse. So you need to have a best case, you need, you need to have a realistic scenario. You need, so I'm going to rent it for 80 hours a week at X dollars per hour, but something's going to, something's going to get written off and blah, blah, blah. You need to have an ideal scenario, you know, Britney Spears is going to decide she wants to come back home and is going to book your studio all year, you know, whatever. And then you need to have a worst case scenario. Well, four other people built studios and if, you know, if this goes in and I can't, you know, and I have time left, I'm going to rent it out for parties or something. I mean, have a, have a backup plan. What happens if, you know, if you don't sell enough CDs, then we're going to be playing bar mitzvahs and we're going to be playing, you know, weddings or whatever. We got. I mean, you know, you got to have a, what happens if your tour doesn't work? Well, if my tour doesn't work, we're going to go back to Lafayette and play what, you know, you just got to have, you got to have a what if it doesn't work scenario. That's critical in your plan. That needs to be in there for sure. Okay. Yes, sir. For those like contingency plans, do you need to write out a whole other plan for it? No, you, you can. This is you. You you'll you'll have a um, you'll have a you'll have a deal, and you're gonna say you know, this is what's your project? Uh, I'm doing the same. Oh, same thing. Okay, so y'all are doing the consulting. Oh, and by the way, you're gonna have to tell them ten times what's your project again because, again, I mean, I I see a stack of them, and you're like, okay, wait, no, let me. You know, let me think. And like, like when you call, you say, hey, I'm Richard. I have the, you know, I'm working, you know, you're looking at my plan for whatever. Right. So y'all are doing the sound stage, right? And music video production. Music video production, right. It's actually what you're doing is video production. Yeah, video production. And then music video is just one component right. of it. You right. can shoot high school football games for somebody who would pay you to do it. Right? A that is excellent point. Excellent. That, that, there, there is your, your, ideally, you probably would like to be doing music videos, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But if it doesn't work out and you're not making it, are you going to shoot the high school games? Absolutely you are. Are you going to do weddings? Yes, I am. Are you going to do kids' birthday parties? You're going to do whatever it does takes to pay that loan back. So your contingency is, our goal is to do la da 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 We are anticipating blah da 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 yeah, We're anticipating so many videos and how long does it take to make a video, and I, mean, I don't know all that, so just whatever all that is. And so we think we can do X number of videos, and we're going to charge X for this, and you probably have premium packages and all you got your packages and and then but in the event that that doesn't work out our backup plan is to go to the high schools and do do football games uh, actually on that note um, and then I'll get to your question on that note um, if you can if you can show them a diverse plan so our, we, our pri primary is primary thing is music secondary is football that will go a lot farther than just music or just football because they're like okay we've got you know, if they don't pay my money back from this, then whew, good. I can. Th then there's a little bit of comfort. Um, your 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 CDs. If if for whatever reason the CDs don't sell, okay, they can still play weddings. So I, I can. I mean, you can. They can see. Okay, well, if so. Um, what what's yours? Yes. I'm developing an event. Okay. Excellent. Um, so your so your what 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 genre of music or. Electronic music, excellent. You have you have kind of a plan of how many people are going to come and when it would be, and we've already been building it. So excellent, yeah, excellent. Projection. And your contingency would be what if it rains the entire weekend? Huh? Okay, right, but right, exactly. And so you need to show us how will how how, how will your event be successful in the rain? Well, it's successful in the rain because it's indoors, or we can. We my contingency plan is to put a tent up, or you just need to. You know what I'm saying? Think about your think about your 
oh my god, this is the disaster, what happened, and how are you going to fix that? What because, that, what's yes, that data associated with a particular business? Like, yeah. If you, it's like the music business in general, a absolutely knows how much money is at stake, they, then they need to tell them how much money is at stake. And then in, in Matt's situation, you have a video production company. Right. So he looks at the, the competition. Absolutely, yeah, that, that we're, we're getting to both, yeah. yeah. The, the, the next two things on the list are the, 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 the bit, like when you, your business is the business that you're competing against, and like that industry as a whole, and your competition. Your competition now and your anticipated competition. I mean, right now there may not be but one studio in town, a production company in town, but you know, what if there's 10, or what's your niche, or that kind of deal. And kind of part of that goes into, but absolutely, if there is, if there is information on your industry or on your thing that you like yours, what's the average what's the average profit for a new artist CD in your area? Or what's the you know if you have an event, you know where, where how are you scaling up your event? The first year, so many are going to attend, and the second year, whatever. But it's very important that you that you let them know that you thought all these things through. Your the the, the industry of your project is very critical. Especially, now those of you who are doing projects in more established industries like production, that's a little bit easier, that's a little bit easier to, to project because I'm sure there are production, production, production studios in Nashville or New Orleans or wherever they are um, versus an electronic event where, okay, you, put, you, can, you, know, you compare it to Jazz Fest, but you know, are there other electronic events? Maybe there are, I don't know, you know, whatever. So, you, you know, you've got... You know, but but yes, you're if, if especially if there is a business that that you are in and competing against, definitely put that in your plan. Or if there's not one, this is a new thing. Yes, sir. Um, this might be a little bit off topic, but I know that for like maybe larger firms who are buying big pieces of equipment, you can do an equipment sale lease back. You absolutely can. Or something like a like a media venture like they're doing. Like, would they be able to buy the equipment? Like, what would a recording studio be able to buy the equipment and then sell it and lease it back to take enhanced cash flow and write that off your assets? Uh, yes. In fact. Um, our company also owns, we have a company called First Security Leasing, where we, we do that very thing. I mean, we lease everything from police cars to police departments, sounds, equipment. Uh, we, we lease, I mean, air, air conditioning units to schools, whatever. Um, yes, if, if, if you're, and I, actually, I'll, this, this is a little farther down, but this is a good segue into this. The thing that you're financing, pr probably some of you, I mean, you're not going to finance, and, and this, this is a statement, not a question. You're not going to finance 100% of what you need. You're, you're just flat out not. I mean, there's, you, you've got to come up with some of it yourself. I mean, if you've got to work at Barnes & Noble or do whatever you've got to do, you're going to have to come up with part of it yourself. Nobody's going to give you 100% financing for anything. A house, I mean, and, you know, barring some special program or whatever, which we're going to get to in a minute because special programs are great. But um, so you've you got to show, you know, you've got, you got to show your percentage. But if the part that you're financing the more tangible that is, the more likely they're going to loan it. If you're financing the building that your sound state, that your production company is in, if the, if it's not used for, a, if it, you know, if, if you for, if if you if you totally default and I have to foreclose on that, I can maybe I can rent it out to somebody else or whatever, because that's a tangible building, versus a very specialized piece of equipment that if you if it default, it, you know, if it if you go bad, what am I going to do with it? I mean, the bank, meaning you know, because I mean, we own we own a golf course, we own some used air conditioners. We, I mean, <laughs> the junk that we own because you foreclose on, you know. The, and anyway, so so the, the the more tangible an asset that you can ask for money for, the better. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I was kind of wondering how like common I guess it is to do something. Like you can you can do a lease back. Um, it's less common. Le I mean, unle now unless you lease it from the manufacturer, in which case that's kind of a separate deal than. Although, although even a manufacturing lease, you're still gonna have to show them a plan and stuff. You know, if you went to Sony and said, "I want to," you know, whatever. Um, okay, so we've got a, a summary. We've got the business, you, 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 your business, a good plan, a marketing plan, your ideal, realistic, and worst case scenarios, um, sales to whom, how, when, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you're talking, you're talking about the, the technology associated with it. if if you're if you're creating. Is anybody's, is anybody's project a new thing that's not currently, like, wow, this, this is a whole kind of new idea? Yours? What's your, what's your new idea? Um, well, I have a business. It's not necessarily new, but it's a combination of, like, a legal service, a recording studio, and a music school. Okay. And I haven't seen a business model like that. Okay. 
Okay, well, that'd be, yeah. But you still could break that down into the three different components of how that's, so for yours, you're going to combine the three. You would look at them separately and then put them together. But if, if you have, if you're needing financing for a new, like the next generation of some, something, then go through the progression of the old generations of it. I mean, you, you probably, you're probably, y'all probably not quite there. I mean, that, that's normally not your first, not your first thing unless you, you know, unless you are an instrumentalist and have some, whatever. Um, so would you recommend this, uh, uh, this level of <coughs> detail for a, if you're going to pitch it to your family? Like some people may want to pitch it to Uncle Frank who's got some money. I will tell you, even Uncle Frank who has some money is going to want to know all this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, level of detail, I mean, your, yours isn't going to be, I mean, the YMCA was borrowing $10 million. So, you know, for, if you're borrowing um, about, about what's the amount that, I mean, do, do y'all know? Well, oh, that, actually, I, that maybe have been a presumption. Definitely know how much money you need. Like, I, I mean, I kind of skipped over that assuming, but, but I guess I should back up. Have a firm, well, you know, I probably need about 70, no. I need $72,000 because here's the breakdown, boom. I need boom, 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 boom. I mean, you don't need a bow, you don't need what, you know, you need, you need an exact figure for an exact purpose for an exact thing. But then I don't you're know. better off at getting Uncle Frank to give them the money to, so they can have some money in the Yes, bank. indeed, yes. If you're going to Uncle Frank, Uncle Frank needs to give you the seed money. Yeah. yeah. And Uncle Frank is, Uncle Frank, I'm guessing, would be a partner at, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to go over... Um, that's kind of the basic information that you need. I kind of want to go through um, special programs. I want to go through commercial loan application. And I want to go through tax-free municipal bonds. Because if you can find, is, 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 are there any more are there any questions about logistics of like what goes in it or how or pretty clear about kind of, you know? Yes, sir. Do you have uh, a document outlining all the different sections that should be in the plan that you would expect? Um, well, I can't... Um, or better yet, you got a plan that worked. Uh, I, now, the, I, a plan that worked, I might could. I, you know, so I would have to ask the people, like the YMCA, before I gave out their information, you'd have to get... But actually, for, for, for as big of a thing as it is, um, like a commercial loan application, I called one of the banks locally one of the other banks and said, what do you use? I mean, ours is pretty lengthy. This is theirs, two pages. Mm -hmm. But with that, they say, oh, but we also get, and they give you this big list. And for us, the, fir the first thing, you're not going to come in and walk out with the money. You're going to come in and you're going you're gonna to see if somebody's interested in talking to you about it further. So, I, and I will say this on this, when, when you go in, the first thing you tell them about is the strongest point of your project. I mean, walk in with, here's my project and this is why it's phenomenal, first. Because you gotta get them, you gotta get them, like that first three minutes, you gotta get them to listen to more. So that's, that's the first, I'm doing this deal, and you gotta believe in your project too. It doesn't work, I had somebody come in without going further, going, um, yeah, I kinda think I wanna do a, okay, I, they lost me at kinda think I wanna. <laughs> That they, I don't even care what it was. They could have been whatever, and they're not getting a loan. If you kind of think you want to do it, you can forget it. I mean, you got to, because we got a whole bunch of people asking for money that kind of think stuff. You got to, this is what I'm doing. My name is Richard, and I am going to build a soundstage, and I would like you to finance it. And if you are just, here you go, that's what you need to do. The first thing, though, and I, actually, I didn't go into the, to, to the, I was going for the institutional. If, if Uncle Frank's going to give you money, Get, that, get Uncle Frank's money before you go to the bank because you can say, well, my uncle has you know, given me $10,000 seed money to do whatever. And that goes a long way. Because that goes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I, I mean, I would have something. I mean, I don't know. You, I mean, my uncle wouldn't give me anything without some kind of plan, you know, other than, you know. Anyway, um, okay, any more, any more questions on just kind of logistics? Everybody knows what they're putting in their plan, kind of. What's the minimum that you finance? What, if they only need ten thousand dollars, not going to get you anything. Uh, well, you you would you would cut. I, I, no, I don't handle that, but yeah, our bank your bank would. Okay. You yeah, a ten thousand dollar deal would be. And I'll tell you this: if you're organized and you have a package with a ten thousand dollar deal, you're much more likely to get to get that because 
a lot of times people with the smaller amount, I know $10,000 sounds like a large amount of money when you start, when you need to get it, but um, you expect to see the really organized stuff on the 10, you, I expect the YMCA to come in with this to me when, when we do our stuff. I don't expect somebody who needs $10,000, if you go in needing $10,000 with a plan, they are going to listen to you. You are, you are if, if your plan looks like a $100,000 plan or a million dollar plan or $10,000 plan, because every once in a while, there'll be stuff in our bank, this is off the record for the bank, but you just kind of, you kind of loan somebody money just because they're just a great person and you just, they just, I mean, it's got to make sense, but at the end of the day, it's my, I mean, it's my decision whether or not to loan, I mean, on those, on those loans, there's not a loan committee. I mean, on a $10 million deal, you use the loan committee and you go through all this, but on the, so the smaller loans, a commercial loan officer, you, you, can, you can do about 20, up to about $25,000 just, yeah, that sounds good, and do it. And if you have a plan and they feel like, I mean, you've got to have a plan, but you know, there's a there's pretty good amount of leeway. And I will tell you this, if I don't like it, go to John's bank. And if he doesn't like it, go to this bank. And if he doesn't like it, go to this bank. If, if, if you come to see me and I don't like it, just say, look, I, you know, I'm, can I, may, I ask, may, I ask why, why, may I ask why I didn't get the loan? I'll always tell you. Well, you know, I didn't think your, your contingencies were a little weak. So you go to John with better contingencies, and he goes, well, yeah, but I think maybe blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, you fix it, you fix it. Well, by the time you get to Joe's bank, you, Joe's bank, you fixed everything, and you get the loan. You know, because, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, un, it's, not, it's not uncommon for us to get somebody who's been turned down three or four times, but they fixed it, and eventually the fifth bank will loan it to them. Yes, sir? We 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 don't we 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 are more we are mostly a governmental bank. I mean I, I mean the bank the bank does. I handle governmental stuff, governmental programs. Um, and John's going to talk to you another time about the tax credits deal and some programs through Louisiana Department of Economic Development that are phenomenal. So that that's that's all of this said. If you can just avoid my whole deal and having to go to the bank and you can get money from a special program or a grant. Man, go for that. But the grants actually are, are you'll, you'll need all the same stuff for a grant. Okay. Um, and that said, when you're looking to get financed, look at grants, because there are grants everywhere. Look for, look for local grants. Look for state grants. Look for um, history. If, any, if anybody, um, like, you're, I don't know where you're planning on locating your deal, but if it's in a historic district, or, let me, or if you don't know where you're going to locate it and there's a historic district tax grant, you are now in a historic, you, I mean, you know, you know, just make your, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if, if the state of Oregon is looking for people to record CDs, I've always wanted to record a CD in Oregon. I mean, you know, you got to, if, if you can find a grant, and there's some grants websites, if you can find a grant that has anything to do with your project, my first house was in, was in Beauregard Town in Baton Rouge, which was, and it was falling down, but there was cheap and free money to fix it up. So I couldn't, do, I couldn't get one in the other part of town, so I got that because they were given tax credits and tax breaks for fixing up historic property. So, so when I went in, I'm like, well, I've always wanted to fix up historic property. You know I mean? That's literally, I went in, they said, what are you doing? Well, I've, you know, I've always wanted to fix the historic property up. And oh, good, that's good, we have this grant. Yeah, good, you know, whatever. So, um, so you know, if you can, loans are good, but you can get a grant, it seems better. So um, look for grants. And John's a phenomenal resource. I mean, the, bit, the, 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 business, of, the business of music, um, nobody in the state knows more than he does. So talk to him. I will tell you, grants, typically, you got to apply like ridiculously in advance for when you need the money. So if you're, if you're graduating in May and need the money in December, you need to be applying for your grant now. I mean, it's like the lag time is just ridiculous on some of these. But there's National Foundation for the Arts. Um, there's some live performance tax credits for your CD. You, you know, you're gonna go, yeah, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do 10, you know, sometimes or they'll, there's some that'll, you know, if you go to, if you go inner city or if you do this or if you, I mean, there's all kinds of, just all kinds of things and private foundations. I mean, you just got, you know, it's kind of, those are, those are hard to get. But anyway, if you can get grants, you know, definitely do that. The tax credits, I'm gonna wait and let you talk about. I wanna talk to you about commercial loans and about bond financing. Why on earth would we talk about bond financing? Since Katrina and Rita, I mean, are, are, who, are, are most of you going to planning on doing your businesses in the New Orleans area or in South Louisiana? Anybody? Raise your hand. Who's doing it? Who's going like totally out of state? Okay. Uh, where, where out of state? California. California? California? Okay. Um, 
if if you go to since 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 Katrina, the U.S. government, um, in fact, let me go ahead and pass these out because if you can pass those around, and we'll um, kind of pass those around. Um, since Katrina, um, there is lots of federal money in Louisiana for all kinds of things. There's federal grant money, and again, if you get a grant, skip the loan business because grants are better because you ain't got to pay them back. So if you can do that, for sure. Um, but municipal bonds, the government lets all kinds of different groups of people borrow money, borrow on a, borrow on a tax free basis. So um, there's all kinds of programs and there's all kinds of new programs coming up about municipal bonds. I'll let y'all finish getting them passed around and then we'll. What did you, what did you mean by that? You said, um, well, I'll let you. Yep. For, for example, your, your sound studio or your production studio, if it's in Orleans Parish, and you and you do it by the end of the year, you can borrow money. You can borrow Go Zone money, which is the Gulf Opportunity Zone, and the government will lend you money on a tax-free basis. They'll, they'll let you borrow money on, at the same rate that City of New Orleans gets to borrow it. And the reason we're going to go over this is because you need to understand what that is and real and understand why that's so good to understand what you're getting. Um, generically, a municipal bond is issued by a government entity, City of New Orleans, State of Louisiana. A specific principal amount, fixed term of borrowing, are you borrowing it for five years, 10 years, 15 years? And by the way, on the term of borrowing, and this goes generically, um, the, the, the amount that you're, the, the term of your borrowing needs to match the useful life of the asset. If your CD is, is if your CD is going to sell in five years, but probably 10 years from now won't be popular, you need to not have it for more than five years. I mean, not more than five years. If your equipment's going to run out, and if you, the useful life of whatever this equipment is is four years, the loan's going to be four years. If it's 12 years, the loan can be 12 years. But they, we always match. You know, we 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 make a list of what we're financing. In fact, I, that's another big thing I miss. In your plan, make a list. I said you have to define a, a particular amount. You need to make a list of this, this is the money I need for what purpose? And every, every dollar needs to be linked to a purpose. Now you can have some miscellaneous, I need research and development and I need, but you ought to have some pretty key, I need this money for this and I need, because you need to have thought about, you know, how, well, how, much, how much marketing do I need and how much whatever. So just keep that in mind. Um, but these programs, your uh, interest, um, tax exempt interest, which is the reason that I bring any of this stuff up. Um, Municipal bonds, okay, if I borrow $10,000 at 10% 10 interest from my bank, okay, then 10% of, of $10,000, my interest is going to be what every year? 10% of $10,000 is, okay, the, these are, <laughs> okay, first we've got to take basic math, 10% of no, $1,000, right? 10% of $10,000 is $1,000 a year, right? Okay. A tax-free basis, so when, but me, the investment bank, I've got to pay income tax on that $1,000 a year. Corporate tax rate's 35%. I pay the government $350 of your, of your $100 goes to the government. Well, I would just soon give you that discount and only make you pay $700 a year. Well. $700 a year is a whole lot better than $1,000 a year for you because times 10 years, you're saving $300 times 10 years is $3,000 over the life of the loan, right? So the lowest, the lower the interest rate, the more money you save in interest. It's like a car loan or any other kind of loan. So if I'm not having to pay income tax on your money, which I don't, if you, okay, so you, got, you have your choice A is $10,000 from commercial bank, you pay your $1,000 interest, I have to pay taxes, the $350. So at the end of the day, I've only gotten $650 at the end of the day after I pay my taxes, right? As opposed to a tax-free bond, if I, the same $10,000 and I loan it to you at 7%, that's a better deal for me. Well, no, it's not. Seven is less than 10. Yes, it is because if, if you qualify for tax-free interest, when you give me my $7,000, I don't pay income tax on it. 
So on that one, I, me, the bank, earn $700 at, seven, at your 7% rate versus $650 at your 10% rate. So, I mean, I'm not getting into a big, a big uh, tax deal, but, I mean, but just know that a tax-free rate means the bank doesn't have to pay income tax on that. So if you can qualify for tax-free rate, that's, I mean, that's $300 a year times 10 years. That's $3,000 less that you would pay on a $10,000 loan. That's, why, couldn't, why couldn't everybody in this room that's going to stay in town apply for a ghost? They very well would need to do that. Well, okay then. There you go. Right. Um, some goes on people. Yeah, yeah. That, and actually, that, pro, that particular program ends at the end of this year, but every year they are coming up with these new, I mean, there's just all, there was, there's always stuff coming up with, with stuff, and especially, like, our, like they'll say, okay, you know, this is for arts, or, you know, if you're in Orleans Parish, or if you're St. Bernard Parish, I mean, your production studio, if they say you get tax-free, but it's got to be St. Bernard Parish, go over the line and do your, I mean, you know, that, that's the reason to do it, because you get, you get, you know, because at the end of the day, you want to save money. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not going to go into all, I just, I gave you stuff about bond financing in the event that you ever need to do that. You kind of need to understand what you're doing a little bit. Um, yes, sir? So who actually issues a municipal bond? Well, yeah. normally... And th this is actually, th this area is, which is why I don't want to go too de detailed into it, because this, this is actually confusing for, I mean, th this took a while to get up to speed even for bankers and lawyers. Um, normally, it's the city. But when the government lets, lets these, and, and the, reason, the reason the government lets private citizens do it is to encourage economic development in areas that were hit by the hurricanes, which, which, it, has, which it has done and which it is doing. So normally, normally, city of New Orleans would just issue their own. If you were issuing, you would go, it's called a conduit issuer, like the Louisiana Development Authority um, that I used to be general counsel of, so pretty comfortable with that. But you, you would go to an agency like that. And typically, if you're doing like $100,000 or more, you would do that. If it's a $10,000 deal, you would try to get in a pool with some other people to make one big application because there's some cost and stuff. But just kind of, there's always different programs for that, though. So when it time comes, you can look into that. Um, and this actually comes probably not so much for your first 10,000 because that's kind of, that's, I mean, that's a lot. I, nobody really would expect y'all to know how to do all this. But if your 10,000 is great and your studio is doing great in a couple of years and you need to expand it and it's 200,000 to expand it, then you need to look at this. Okay, um, I want to go over, uh, go to this one. This has the, the ratings on it, this page. And only, you, you also got to, oh, and just by the way, just assume if a banker asks you a totally bonehead question, just answer it. I mean, I have, we, we have bankers that just, you're like, seriously, I mean, I'm looking at people going, you're seriously asking that? They may ask if you're, if, you know, is, are you or your product or your company rated? Ab no, indeed, none of you are rated. City of New Orleans or Exxon or like a company, insurance company, would get a rating. You've heard somebody like AAA rated or whatever. That's, that's what they mean is your credit rating. Your credit rating, personally, would be a score of 800 or, you know, 850 or less or whatever the score is. But, no, you're not rated. So just if that comes up. Um, the other, and th go, go to the next page. This, this market data, don't expect anybody to look at this other than to say, if, if, it get, if you get down to, and, and this actually, this is, this is not just for bonds. That, that's actually kind of all I want to say about the bonds, just to kind of let you know that that's out there. And if, that, if you see something saying tax-free bond program, know that it's there, know that it's worth doing, give us somebody and we'll help you when it, when it comes up because it's, it's pretty tedious. But, but um, different banks will say, let, let's just say your project is phenomenal, your, 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 your studio, you have, you have John's bank says, yes, I'm going to do it. Then you immediately go to John's bank and borrow the money, no. You then come to my bank and you say, well, John's bank was going to give me, so let's just, so we're over the hurdle, everybody's project is great, and you now all have an offer from a bank. If, if it was a quick offer, <laughs> you say, thank you very much, um, let, let me come back in a couple of days and we'll you know, do the deal. Now, that said, a that, what's that saying, a bird in the hand is, yeah, so if, you, if you're having trouble getting financing and you got one, take it. If you go to your first one and they're immediately going to give it to you, shop the rate a little bit. The only reason I put this in is if you will see all of these, all of these are interest rates. This whole page, and so when you come in and you say, because what you will say is, 
what's your rate? And a banker is, heaven help that a banker would tell you, well, it's 4%. No, they're going to say, well, we use a sliding scale over, and it's either going to be a sliding scale over LIBOR, which is the London Interbank Offering, or uh, mortgage rates if you're doing a building, or you, we do so much over Treasury, or we do so much over Prime, or we do so much over whatever. Just know that if John's bank does 4% over Prime and my bank does 4% over LIBOR, you kind of need to like, and just ask them, because bankers, bankers just blurt all this stuff out and, real, and don't realize that half the time nobody knows what you're talking about. But ask them, well, what is that, what is that in my term? Because at the end of the day, all you care about is what is my interest rate? You don't care that it's so much over LIBOR, what is my rate, what does that mean? And ask, because if, if you don't ask, so if I'm in with somebody and they don't ask, I assume they know what I'm talking about, which is generally, you know, so, but all you say is there's 900 different types of interest rates, so find out what you're doing. Also, find out from the banker, are you compounding daily, monthly, weekly, annually, what are you, if you compound interest, um, and this is what compounding interest is and what it means and why it's important. Your same $10,000 loan at 10% because you didn't qualify for the go zone thing. So you got your 10% interest. If, it, if, if interest compounds yearly, then 10% of $10,000 at the end of the year, you pay your $1,000. If it compounds daily, then you would, you would do it, you don't pay 10% every day, but you would say, you would do 10% divided by 365 because that's how many days, and you would do that little percent. So on day two, it would be $10,001. And so by the end of the year, you're actually paying 10% on $10,020 instead of, because that you keep adding, the, the more often you compound interest, the more money you're gonna pay. Just know, again, I don't expect anybody, I, I have large blank stares, so that's okay. <laughs> but just know, the only reason I put all this in is not for you to understand it, but you just to be aware that it is there. Be aware of, if there's a term you don't understand, ask. Be aware that different interest rates and different things mean something, or otherwise bankers wouldn't, wouldn't do that. And I'm going to try to get you to compound daily because that's better for me. You want to try to compound. And I will say this, when you go in the first time, it is very acceptable and highly encouraged to bring someone that is a little more knowledgeable about banking and financing with you. You know, that would be, you know, like when you go with your first car, bring your parents who've done a car before. I mean, bring somebody who knows because not that bank, I mean, bankers for the most part aren't going to try to take advantage of you, but if you don't, if you don't know to ask the right questions, then it may not end up quite as, quite as good. Anyway. Uh, let me just point out. That yes, sir. <coughs> what that makes me think of is uh, Patrick, who's representing, Patrick and David have a country, company and they're going to represent artists and do business planning for artists and the like. So that artist may want to borrow the money. Correct. Right? So they should go with the artist because they understand compounding and they understand I, this. One hundred percent sure. That's their. Yes. That's one yes. of the elements of their service. Absolutely. In fact, I will tell you this: if, if those of you like y'all, um, is anybody else doing like a, a, a um, anybody else doing like a recording stage or a studio or a production company that's going to involve a physical plant that you're releasing out? Is anybody else involve a building? Yours? Anybody else? What, what, is your, what is yours again? Music venue. Music, music venue. venue, what is that? Club. Oh, oh, club, yeah, right, 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 right. And by the way, when you, when you go to talk to the banker, it's a club, just, it, yeah, it's a club. Because, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, venue, obviously, we know what that is, but you, you're, you know, you can, that, because see, when I get there, when you, when you say music venue, I'm like, well, what is that? When you say club, Oh, I got you. I've been to a club. Yeah, I spend money. Oh, yeah, I spend money at a club. I mean, that I spend money on a CD. I spend. If you can get, if you can connect with the guy lending you the money, to understand what, how are you going to make money? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't even have to ask you how you're going to make money. You're going to sell liquor, and you're going to have cover charges for your bands. I mean, and if there's something else other than that, that's great. But I, I understand because I have paid for liquor and I have paid for cover charges at bands. So I'm there for you, and I'm you. You have already. You, you're already halfway there with me loaning you money because I understand what you're doing. And so if he tells them that uh, Robert and the Republic is making a fortune at the Republic right. and he can show some data. Oh, goodness, yeah, that's yeah. That's going to help. Yeah, yeah. Now, with yours, once, once I step aside from thinking about, oh, I, my college days were really fun and now I'm old and can't do all that anymore or I have a hangover the next morning, what, once I get past that, then I go, well, 
what kind are you doing? Because like, for example, if you're doing his electronic music, I probably don't understand that. You know, if, if you can get Jimmy Buffett to come play, I'm, you know what I'm saying? So you can, I mean, you know, you need like, you know, what venue and what, and so, so what, what, what venue are you after? Or what, 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 I mean, you're, is it going to be a music club or just a bar or what? Okay. 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 And, but I mean, like, like a place where people come and you like spend, spend the evening and, or is it like a museum? Okay, okay, okay. Well, see, and you want to, you want to, for, for, for class a lot of times, and not John, but a lot of professors are like, you know, let's make it, do at the end of the day, for me loaning you the money, you got to make me understand what you're doing. And I, and I get, because in my world, a museum loses money, a bar makes money. So, I mean, you, honestly, you know, you just, that's the, that's the bottom line. And by the way, sometimes, by the way, because probably the museum aspect and your visual arts thing, that's really, I mean, that's a, that's a great artistic thing, and that's really good. And ultimately, ulti let, let's just say, for example, that your vision ultimately is to do a nightclub where people, rather than listen to music, go watch paintings. Let's just say that's it, okay? You're going to come to me that, and I'm going to go, it kind of, Really, people are going to go pay, because I'm thinking, well, people are going to pay, and you're, you're going to say, but if that doesn't work, I'm going to have bands. Like your contingency, when I was talking about the contingencies, have your contingency. Well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have bands, and my artistic side is going to have the, the art. Because the reality is, you got to show them where you're paying the money back. And, and I can relate, and like I can relate to your, I can relate, I can relate to buying a CD, I can relate to needing legal services, I can relate to going to an event, I can relate... You want, you want to get the guy relating to how the money's going to be paid back, specifically how the money's going to be paid back. How much are you going to, are you going to do cover charges? Are you going to be open every seven nights a week? Are you going to this? Are you going to, you know, is it covers just on Friday or covers when you have a good band? And are you going to let crappy bands play for art, art's sake? Because that's the other thing you got to watch out for. Art, artistic people, sometimes you think, well, I'm going to make money off this, but, you know, I want to be, be arts-minded. And so and I'm, I'm on the, for example, I'm on the board for the Baton Rouge Little Theater. We do, we do 12, we have two, we have two theaters. We do 14 shows a year. We, 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 for art, for art's sake, we put on some of the real dramatic, you know, um, proof and some of these real dramatic deals. But at the end of the day, we got to have butts in the seats to keep the doors open. So we're doing the Sound of Music and the King and I for summer musicals. You know, yes, artistically, I want to do proof and I want to do all these really deep meaning deals, but that's only after the butts in the seat have come to pay for Sound of Music and the King and I. Because the reality is, Sound of Music and the King and I make more money than does the dramas. Just they, that's reality. So when you're pitching your business plan, same type deal. That's great that you want to do visual, but when you're talking to me, and that's good because I'll think, oh, I'm doing good. But like, when you're talking to me, you're making your money off the bands and the liquor. You know, and that same, like you're making your money off of, like the football, you're making your money off the football as your backup. And that's great, and like, like you may say, well, you know, what I really want to do is try to, try to create more symphonic music videos or something or whatever. That's great, and that's artistic, and, I, and I'm there for you, but I just want to make sure you got the football and, and the regular stuff down. You know what I'm saying? You, know, you, you see, I mean, you, under, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, your mission. Because we we've, we've taught that if you stray too far from your mission, you kind of engage in other things. It just comes too spread out, and you kind of fail. Y yes, if you spread beyond your core mission. However, as to the bank, uh, uh, and here and here here's here's where I here's where idealism meets reality. Ideally, yes. Ideally, you have a straight mission. Ideally, my bar to my my my, my bar just to look at art. Ideally, if somebody will lend me money for that, that's great. And that's what you start with. But when, but when, when somebody goes, well, how are you going to make money with that? And that you start to lose them, you, your, that backup contingency plan needs to be, oh, well, we're also going to have, I mean, because at the end of the day, if you, don't, if you can't get the money for your project, you can't do, if, if, the, if the goal is to one day be successful enough to do this, but to start out with it, you got to do that half the time and do something like you got to do half football games. I mean, ultimately, your goal is not, your dream is not to do football games, I'm quite sure. 
However, if you got to do that to, make, to pay the bills until you develop this, you do. So yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a good point. You absolutely have your you have your mission, and your mission as to your mission is straight on, and that is what you're going to do, and that is what your business wants to do. But to get a loan and to pay the money back, sometimes you gotta like you gotta do what it takes. You know, like if I have to go work at Barnes and Noble part time to pay them, and that may be your contingency plan. I want to follow my mission, but I know if I work 40 hours at Barnes and Noble, I can pay this pay this money back. Now, how much um, Devin's got this plan for a venue? Mm -hmm. If he could. That's scalable. If it works here, it mm -hmm. can work in other places. Should you go ahead sure. and talk about that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, people, I mean, especially, and I, I will tell you this too, there's a huge difference um, in getting to that. There's a huge difference in, I say a huge difference, there is a significant difference in a local bank and like, like for example, a Chase Bank versus a, um, I don't know what, what's a local bank around New Orleans. Bank of New Orleans, exactly. Or um, a Bank of New Orleans bank is going to really probably, un a Chase Bank, first of all, or a Capital One or a, um, you know, Wells Fargo or a Bank of America, they're going to have a corporate headquarters somewhere or a big loan committee, and it's going to be all this kind of very firm, rigid stuff. The Bank of New Orleans, there's going to be a little bit of a, he's really working with me and I want him to succeed because he's in my city. And so there's a little bit of that, and my guess is that for all of you, you will be better off at a local bank than you will at a national bank, just as a general rule. They will also, by the way, want, want to make sure that you're going to put your checking account and your everything else, because I, I, I want to I go um, kind of leading into this. This is a commercial loan application from a community bank. I got the one from our bank, which is, doesn't really apply because we, do, we don't do exactly that type thing, and I got one from, from Bank of America, which was kind of a slightly ridiculous, I mean, just for, I mean for, for a smaller amount of money, it just didn't work as good. So this one is, here's a thing, amount requested. This is not, this is $10,000. It's not kind of $10,000, well, I think maybe it's about, it is a particular number. Term of credit requested. How long do you need the money for? Do you need it for a year? Do you need it for 10 years? You know, what, you know, and again, now, you, and y'all, you'll realize this too, the lower the rate, the better. The longer the term, like if you borrow 10000 for 10 years, your monthly payment is less than if you borrow 10000 for five years. Everybody, everybody with me? You, okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. The loan type, is it a personal loan? Is it guaranteed by your parents? Is it a straight business loan? You may, y'all may actually be better off for your, for your businesses you may be better off rather than saying, I want to get a loan for a CD to make a CD or whatever. You just may want to go get a loan. I mean, you just may want to get a signature loan because you have good credit. Maybe. I mean, if you, ha if you have good credit, you may just want to, or if you have, if, you know, if any of you like your parents or you have a condo that you've been living in, if you have real estate or something, you just may want to get a home equity loan or, a, what, or, when, or when you're buying your first condo and, and you know, instead of putting 20% down, put 10% down and borrow it there. You know, I mean, you know, so just kind of keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to go in. If it's a ten, I'm just saying ten thousand dollars in general, because that's that, that's probably about the amount of most of these, maybe. I think it might be a little higher. A little higher. So just depending. I mean, you may just want to go get a loan. Um, the purpose of the credit request. That's a, you know. Um, Let me ask you a question. If you're turned down for that loan, yes. You apply for that loan. Yes. You're turned down. Does that affect your credit rating negatively? No. 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 It does not. Now, if you. Um, yeah, and actually, actually, that's a that's a good thing. Um, just as a little aside, and I'll, then I'll get to your question. Um, your your personal, um, each of you has a credit score. By the way, this is this is my just soapbox deal. Each of you has a credit score, and it goes. I mean, your utilities. If you have a credit card, if you have a car loan, your student loans, whatever. Every time you are late on a car payment, or on your electricity, or on your rent, if it is in your name. Every time you are late or don't make your payment, there is a mark on your record. And when I pull, when I pull your deal to see about it, I go, man, I like the bar. And I pull it up and I go, this guy was late. I mean, because I can see this guy was late on his electric bill nine out of 12 months last year. Okay, this guy is not responsible because he can't get, if he can't get an electric bill paid timely, how is he going to pay my loan timely? And I promise you, we look at that. We look at, we look at your, your electric bill, your water bill, your phone bill, your credit card bill. Can you manage your credit card? Do you have a credit card? 
can you manage it? You know, are you are you making your minimum payment and you're already because I mean we're we're obviously going to pull your pull your personal credit and actually that's leading into this. Like if you if the two of you are doing it together, y'all need to have who 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 else is doing joint? Anybody else doing joint projects? Is the two of y'all okay? Anybody else? Okay. Y'all need y'all need to have a definite specific in your plan that you're going to turn into John. Who are, are you? Are you pure 50-50 partners, or is 149-51? Are you? Are you? Are you each borrowing? Are you borrowing five and you're borrowing five? Or are you borrowing ten together? Or does that matter? I mean, are you saying, well, how? You I mean the answer? Maybe well, how we can get the loan? I don't know. Maybe, but maybe no. I don't want to. I only want to do this, or I want to do this. You may have a house to put up, and you may not, or something. I mean, whatever. So just kind of. You know, or, or, or are you setting up an LLC to borrow it in the LLC no, deal? And, that, and all, all of you could think about, you know, are you doing this as a sole proprietorship or a partnership or a whatever? You, you, you won't have, you know, an LLC or whatever. But especially y'all that are doing together, think about how, I mean, are you doing a partnership or a corporation or a limited liability corporation? Or are you just two, two people, both borrowing money, going to put it together? And if y'all disagree and you want to make your payment and you don't, who, who is the controlling person? Like, if, it, if, if it's 50-50 and you can't decide, does that mean it doesn't get done, or does that mean, anyway, just, just that's just, just kind of in general. What? Um, if yes, sir? applying as an LLC hurt your chances of getting a loan? No, no, um, no. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, they, uh, no, it doesn't at all. At the end of the day, in, in fact, I, I will tell you this, with, with college, there's with banks and with bankers, we a lot of us have been there. I mean, like my, I, I like I remember going in on my first little rent house that I tried to do, and I, I I'm I was there. I I when you walk in and you're called, I I know where you've been, and I'm there, and I'm and I because I want to help you if I can most of the time. Um, so uh, but would we ask if oh the LLC thing? Yeah, if you if you have taken the time to create an LLC, that's pretty impressive. I mean, quite honestly, if somebody if, if if two college students come in and they have taken the time. To accurately create an LLC, by the way, not <laughs> that, that's the other thing. W w however, you're going in, have the if you're going to go in as an LLC, have your LLC papers with you. And I'm getting ready to go in through all the things that, that they, but no, an LLC, it, it, at the end of the day, you both got to personally co sign the loan. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you're, you're, you're pledging everything you got. You know, your car, your house, whatever, you know, at the end of the day. But no, the, the LLC is fine. You just, you just both have to, because um, this will say, T loan type, is it a corporate or a personal, or whatever. Okay, credit request, um, is it application? Is it applicant only or joint with co-applicants? We intend to apply as applicants or co-applicants, meaning are you doing five and you're doing five or are you doing 10 together? I would suggest you're doing 10 together. By the way, I would, I would always suggest going in together and that's just, that's just show, that's more diversity for that. Okay, uh, and then it says, you know, borrower, what are you doing? Do you have a co-signer? Do you have, did, did Uncle Tom, did Uncle George, whoever it was, give you the $10,000 seed money or what else are you putting up and blah, 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 blah. Um, your business name, you, def, you definitely gonna have a name. I mean, you've definitely got, I mean, I would think, you know, especially, especially the guys together. If you have a name for your deal, let's establish it. And um, your, your big hurdle is going to be, okay, is this, your, your big hurdle, quite honestly, is gonna be, Okay, is this just a college kid that just wants to do this, or does he really want? I mean, is, or or is this actually a career choice? I mean, this is like, well, I couldn't decide if I wanted to work at Barnes and Noble or do a studio, so I'm gonna try. Or, or have you really thought about it? Obviously, you've really thought about it because you're in this class and you will have this phenomenal plan. In fact, I'll tell you, you, y'all, you, this is the best class you. I mean, if if he if y'all if you're if y'all are gonna have a full plan by the time you get out of here. I would be blown away if somebody walked in with a full plan for a $10,000 application. It would be so impressive, and I would be 10 times more likely to give you the loan. It's, I mean, seriously, it's just, it's, that's, this, I mean, that's. You may be getting a few calls. <laughs> right, we're going, to be, right, right, right. And actually, you say that, um, we do have, we, we work, we don't do local bank, we don't do the small amounts, but we work with about 20 different local banks that do. So absolutely, when y'all get ready to do it, let me know and I will put you, I can kind of, what, and what I can do, I can glance at it. Well, John will have already done this, but, and try to, try to help you find a local bank to, I'll tell you this, if you have home, if, I don't know where y'all are from, but if you're from you know, Lafayette or you're from 
Natchitoches, then you know, try People's Bank because that's your hometown bank and they want to help the hometown guy. You know, always use that. Where, wherever you're, apply, apply here where you are, apply where you're going, like California, and apply where you're from. Always, just kind of general rules. Because sometimes California is not lending, but Louisiana is lending, for example. In yeah, fact, Louisiana, uh, as a result of Katrina, Orleans Parish and the parishes around here lost 5,000 small businesses, closed, and did not, did not come back. So they're looking. The banks are, yeah, the, ba the banks are loving y'all. Because the other thing the banks, are, the banks are wanting to do is get into a long-term relationship. Because, yeah, this is your first art show or first studio or first bar or first whatever. They want to get the, they, they want it to be successful so they can do the second, third, and fourth, and fifth one. And when you're Hooters, which, I mean, they had to have a first one somewhere, you know, you, you're getting the national chain or the national chilies or the sound stages or the whatever, you know, whatever the thing was. So th they're going to want, and I'll tell you, that's one thing that Whitney Bank in New Orleans is a master of. Whitney is a phenomenal bank about, they, they are, they screen your packet for Whitney is going to be 15 times larger than any other bank you will go to. However, if Whitney loans you money, they will loan it that, that you're, you, you have a lifetime relationship. Do you think that they should all just go apply for a loan after they wipe your plan just for the heck of it, just for the experience of doing it? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't hurt. I, I'll, although, um, when, you, when your credit is pulled, I will say, um, if you have no intention of doing it, then no. Because when your credit is pulled, if you apply at six banks, they've got to pull your credit score. Well, I can see when your credit score, if your credit score has been pulled 15 times in the last month, you know, what's, yeah, what's the deal? Why, you know, why, why are you, you know, so if it's been pulled once or twice, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't apply for it if you, if, if you just want to, now you might go to a bank and sit down and say, hey, let me, let me walk through this with you and I'm looking at thinking of doing this. And, but I, I, wouldn't actually, I wouldn't actually apply unless you had some semblance of... Yeah, taking the yeah. money if they offer it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because that, that would not be impressive if you apply for it and say, sorry, just kidding, I don't need it, you know. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, you can. Yeah, I, I, you, you apply. If you're where, where, where's your hometown? Okay, then if I'm you, I'm gonna apply at Bank of Denham Springs. I'm gonna apply at Bank of New Orleans. I'm gonna apply at Bank of Houston, Community Bank of Houston. Yeah, for sure. And I'm also gonna apply wherever my parents bank, for sure. You know, Mr. Arthur Perkins. Love Mr. Arthur. He's, we we do all the financing for Denham Springs. He's the, this is Mayor Pro Tem and and. Um, and he and he and Jimmy Durbin, we that's who went to New York with us on our ratings trip, by the way. Anyway, yeah, for not great guy. Anyway, so yeah, you're gonna apply where you're from, where your parents bank, where you are. And actually, by the way, if any of your parents have a business, by the way, if your parents have a business, that's the bank you apply for because if, if daddy's a good customer, I mean, I know that's not and that's not fair at all, but that's reality. So you got to work with reality, not necessarily what's fair or ideal. Yes, somebody had a yes, sir. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, are there any advantages or disadvantages to applying for a personal loan versus a business loan? Um, not well. Um, starting out, not really. Um, starting out, I would apply it if you if you are forming a business, I would apply for it in the business name, because you want that business to establish credit. Starting out, it's your personal debt anyway. But when I'm when I'm saying the loan type, I'm going to go ahead and say. There are some banks where a personal line is slightly different than a commercial line, but for the most part, it's going to be the same, with the exception of if you already own your house and you're doing a home equity line. Okay. Like if you, know, if, if you already have a condo or if, you're, you know, if you have a condo you've been living in, in at Loyola and you know, you've got some equity in it, if you, can, if you can borrow off the equity of some real estate, that's got to be personally because you personally own the house. Okay. And in, in which case, by the way, that's the best thing to do Overall, if you have, if you can borrow with real estate collateral, that's the cleanest, cheapest, easiest way to borrow. But, but you would want to borrow, if possible, in the name of your company because you want your company to start establishing credit. Because when you go for that second loan, you want the company to have a. The second loan, when you say, when I when I pull the credit, I'm pulling the credit of the company, and I'm going, oh wow, the company borrowed ten thousand dollars a couple of years ago. They haven't been late on a payment. Yeah, this is good. I'm going to do another one. 
And it, so whereas, it, whereas if you borrowed it yourself, you haven't established anything for the company. Okay. Is there some virtue in paying the loan back quicker than the schedule? Um, not completely, although it's not. I, what, what, what looks impressive is making your payments on time every month from month one to month end. If, if, you, um, if you pay it back, if you borrow $10,000 and paid it back immediately, then you, it probably shows you didn't really need as much as you borrowed and you maybe didn't plan as well as you should have. What if you got lucky and your business took off? Then, then, then that's, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you just, have to have a, you just have to have a good story. You just have to, if it's something out of the ordinary, why, why, why and, and, and back to great, yeah, wow, I had this, you know. Yes, sir. Okay, um, and here, here's a here's a um, well cre credit cards are a whole a whole new and thing. Um, you have and, and th this will tie in kind of to his question about do you do it personally or corporately? Again, if you can do corporately, you're establishing credit of the corporation, which is great for down the road, right? Now, ideally, if you can't get it corporately, get it you know get it. At the end of the day, get it however you can get it. But ideally, you would establish a corporate line with your company because you, that's going to establish your company because your company is going to be successful. You wouldn't be doing this if you didn't think your company is successful. You, you, right. So um, th you, they, com banks will look at the amount of debt you have outstanding. Um, when, you, when you're establishing your, your, your very first time, because no, nobody is, is anybody here already in a business like you've been operating? You have been. What do you what? Okay. What is your what is your business? Yeah, so we're a pastor, okay. Okay. Because um, if you can show that you've been in business for a year, in fact, I would dare say if you've done a consulting job, that was when your business started. I mean, I would go ahead and you know. And so, um, if you can show some history, you that's that's phenomenal. And that gets back to the leverage. Leverage. And credit is good and bad. Too much credit, if, if, if you already have, if, if, you know, if you're borrowing 10000 from me and you already have four credit cards with $10,000 limits, what's to keep you tomorrow from maxing out the credit cards and going bankrupt? I mean, that, you know, that's kind of a, you know, the flip side to that is if you don't have any credit cards and something happens, then what are you going to do to get you through it? So that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of a tricky you 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 want to you want to you want to be reasonable. You want to have a reasonable amount. You want to the main pay your bills on time every month, and especially I don't know how many of you are co-leasing apartments. One poor person is usually one 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 of you is signed at the top, and I have I have I have pro a rental property. One person signs, and I'm right outside of LSU. One person signs, and there's three of you paying the rent. Cannot tell you how many times I've gotten two of the three rents. Well, you know what? The person at the top may have paid theirs, but if your roommate didn't pay, you didn't pay because you're on the lease. So just keep that in mind. I just I don't want to be a dead horse, but please pay your bills on time if you're ever trying to get a, try to get a get a loan. And if it's been a catastrophe up to now, if you have been a complete catastrophe credit-wise, this month start and your story is I was a credit catastrophe, but I knew I wanted to do this, so I got my act together to get my company started. And the more months you have behind you, paid on time, the better. So just that's my, that's my thing. Because that, that is honestly the number one thing that kills a loan is your bad, bad credit as in like just, you know, unreliability. But leverage, um, if, you, if you have assets that are leveraged, if, you've, if you have, a, uh, I mean like a car loan, that people understand that. If you have, um, leverage is good if it's like a piece of equipment. Like I've already, we've already bought our whatever. And it was it was eight thousand dollars, and we still owe six on it. That's fine. In fact, that's good because it shows you paid off two of it. You know, so that kind of leverage is good. Just generic, just generic debt is you know, debt debt without a reason is not good. Other, I mean, like student loans are acceptable, car loans acceptable, particular debt on some particular thing is acceptable. Credit card debt is acceptable as long as it's reasonable and not. You know, not crazy. Although no credit card debt is way better than credit card debt. Anyway, in fact, by the way, 
if you're going to apply for just another, if you're going to apply for a loan, the cleaner every because you're going to apply as, as a company in which everybody's, but you're also the company doesn't have a history, so the only thing we know to pull is your personal history. So yes, you're applying as a corporation. But we're going to pull your personal history to get the loan in the corporate. If the, the, the cleaner it is, if you have a Chevron card, an Exxon card, a Dillard's card, a Visa, and a whatever, and they've all got $50, $50 balances, just pay them off. I mean, pay, or pay a couple of them off. It's just better. To, it's just the, the cleaner package we can put, the better it looks. So rather than having, I'd rather see one $250 visa bill out, or one $500 visa line out than $50 on 10 different credit cards. I mean, that just, it just, it's just cleaner to look with one. Yes, sir? What if you pull the credit and they don't have, like, I don't have a credit card and I've never had to, like, make any payments or anything, so nope. I don't have credit. Like That's okay. That's okay. You, you will, first of all, they'll look at both of y'all. So they'll say, do you know, see, and, and your, what you will say is either, what, the, the positive of that is you don't have any credit, so my, my, my loan is first on your, that, that's it, first on the loan. They'll ask you, well, how did you get through school? Well, my parents paid, I got a scholarship, whatever. I mean, you know, be prepared to, in fact, at your stage, be prepared to talk about school and where you came from and where you're going with it because that's, I mean, y'all are all, and, and let me just say, the, the big plus that every one of you in this room has is you will have a degree from Loyola University. That's very impressive. You obviously are intelligent people or you wouldn't be at Loyola University and you wouldn't be graduating. So you are already one step ahead of a lot of the people that are coming in to get the loan. I mean, you are very intelligent and very credible to be where you are. So just keep that in mind. That's a very good thing. And the, the chances are that most of you would be able to get some kind of loan for your project just because you have, just because of who, who you are and where you've graduated from. I mean, it's very impressive. So just keep that in mind. Just be prepared to say, I don't have any, and, that, and that's okay to not have, that's great. Um, you know, if, if when you get out, you should probably put the water bill or the electric bill in your name, if possible. I mean, just, you know, just for future. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't, you hear people saying, oh, we'll just go out and borrow some money and pay it back just for the sake of doing it. That doesn't, to, to me, if I say, well, why did you borrow the $5,000 and pay it back? Well, I just wanted to establish credit. That doesn't show me anything. That just, in fact, that shows me that you paid interest you didn't need to pay. So, I mean, you know, I mean, seriously, that's, because a lot of people go, oh, well, I, you know, when you get out of school, you need to go borrow some money and pay it back for, no, don't, that's, you know, that's, <laughs> just get a water bill and a phone bill and what, you know, so, anyway. <laughs> yes, sir? Okay. Does your personal loan, like how you're doing with that, those payments affect that? Yes, absolutely it does. If, you, if you're behind on your personal loan, forget it. Let your partner apply for the loan on his own and hope he gets it. I mean, if you're already behind on the loan, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're late, that's why, like if you've been late on your Exxon bill, you were probably late because you had finals and you forgot to pay it. I'm going to assume you were late because you didn't have any money. And you, and, and you couldn't pay it. I mean, that's that's my stuff. So, you know, you need to. But yeah, if if you're all if you are already behind, that if you have the, the flip side, if you have a personal line already and you've been paying it off, that shows great responsibility. So absolutely, put it. That's a plus. If you haven't been paying it off and you're defaulting in it, I wouldn't even put my name on the application. I'll let my my business partner do it. Quite honestly. Um, let, me, let me just finish running real quick. I'll be happy to, many questions as possible. Um, all the kind of stuff, the stuff that this bank requires, they'll list the stuff. Um, if the loan agreement is less than $100,000, which it is, um, then they require three years of financial statements. You don't have three years, okay, what, right, you don't have, I don't know, how, how many of you file your own tax returns? Anybody, everybody else files it with your parents? Right, so on that, because, oh, by the way, if they ask you for something that you don't have, then your page needs to say three years tax returns. You, it needs to say, have been in Loyola University, didn't file, my parents filed, please ask with what. But answer all of their questions because if, I, if, you, if you leave it blank, if I say I need three years tax returns and you leave it blank, I'm going to assume either it's bad or you didn't read the thing fully or like, well, what, did, did she not see this? What's the deal? Whereas if you put, don't have them because I've been at Loyola, that's a good answer. But whatever they ask you for, give it to them. Even if it is ridiculous, 
You know, you may say, may I ask why, you know, you know, I'm happy to provide that, but can you give me an explanation? Or if it's something you don't understand, can you give me an explanation of why you need it? Because sometimes it depends. But yeah, ask, so, so um, L the, the LLC deal, they want a copy of your LLC operating agreement if it's an LLC, your partnership agreement if it's a partnership. And the partnership agreement, by the way, for you who have partners, it involves um, who's, who's responsible for the debt. The answer is we both are. Um, what's, is, are you 50-50? Are you 60-40? Did Uncle Joe give you $10,000 and he's got 10%? Or are you, I mean, what, you know, what's, what's the deal? What if you need extra money? If it's 10,000 and it's really 10,000 and you put an extra thousand dollars in, are you still 50% or do you become 51%? I mean, you need, you just need just things to ask and that, that doesn't all go in here, but they may ask you that. So, uh, articles of incorporation, if you're a corporation, which you wouldn't be, um, split liability, split the split of liability and profits among partners. Um, personal endorsements of each principal owner or part or partner. That personal endorsements just mean I know I have to pay the money back, and because every once in a while you'll get somebody applying for a loan that doesn't clue in that if the partner if the corporation doesn't pay they you know they got to pay. Yeah, you do. You know, just so you, there's a thing. Um, if if it's for a building, if you're if you're if you're anybody's doing a building, you gotta have title insurance on the building. So they want proof of title insurance or title insurance commitment. Um, they want to see existing business, uh, existing business propositions and history. So like you've done consulting, they want to see that. Or I haven't done consulting, this is a new thing. Um, last three years balance sheet. Um, if you did one consulting job, how much did you get paid for it? Where did the money go? Whatever. Um, uh, income statements and tax returns. Um, and then big, big, big star. Most important thing is your pro forma. Again, what are you doing? How are you getting paid? And more importantly, how are you paying my money back? The most important thing that you will turn in, period, is your pro forma of what are you doing, where's the money coming from, and how am I getting paid back? And that's best case, ideal, that's I, expected case, best case, and most importantly, worst case. I'm gonna do the football game, I'm gonna play the weddings, I'm gonna consult for what, I mean, whatever it is, Bet, or I'm a, I'm a lawyer, I'm going to take, I mean, I'm a bond lawyer and a banking lawyer, but worst case scenario, I can go do quickie divorces and I can go do curatorships if I have to. I mean, that's what they want to see. Are you willing to do what you need to do or I can, whatever. Um, the pro forma actually, of everything you turn in, the pro forma is the most important. Because at the end of the day, what you've got to convince me is that you can pay the money back. I mean, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, now all this stuff goes to that, but that's what you've got to convince me. Your pro forma is not. Cash flow analysis. Yeah, yeah. You, I want to know. Um, I want to know. I need. They, they want. I want. I want to see. A, they, they're going to want to see a breakdown. Their pro forma would be a breakdown of. I need ten thousand dollars, and that split among you know two thousand dollars equipment, five thousand dollars down payment on my building or building rent, and you know a hundred dollars for paint and you know, whatever it is. And so that's my total. And then I'm gonna. Then I'm gonna make. We anticipate. Oh, and by the way, you never anticipate being up to speed to start. You, you, you ramp up, even if you have clients signed up, you still ramp up. So like your first month, you're going to try to do this. You want to show growth when you're on your pro forma. You want to show that, that, that year two is better than year one and year three is going to be better than year two. So kind of ramped up. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they they will want to know what what are your current your current liabilities and your current obligations. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. They will want to know what do you you know what do you. Um, let me see if that's on here. You would ask for money to help with your bills, like while you're still in the business. No, 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 no. You would you would never. Yeah. Well, if 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 you're, again, your your goals are going to be to get your business established. Right. So your business and this is kind of, your business is hiring. I mean, the reality is your business, which is you, is hiring you to run your business, in essence. I mean, you're not getting a salary. I mean, you're obviously not going to show yourself getting a salary. But um, I would never show that I got to pay rent for myself. I mean, you just, because that, that's the I'm willing to work at Barnes & Noble at night to pay my rent if I have to. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would never show. Now, if you're getting a personal loan, and you, if you don't care about establishing for your, for your company, um, although even a personal loan, you don't want to see living expenses, unless you're in school or something like that. But I mean, you don't want to see when you're working, you're gonna, you want to, you want to see your money going to particular assets. You want to see it building something, 
building a business, building, you don't want to see it paying rent for you to live or getting groceries. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, if you were coming up with your financial statements, like a startup budget, mm -hmm. and then uh, projected cash flow statements, mm -hmm. would there be a specific amount of years you'd want to see, or just like until positive cash flow? Like, would you show like projected cash flow? For I want to show, years? well, you, you would show, I've, obviously, and here's where it's kind of, mm, um, and, and actually, he, here's where the, the answer to this is going to be kind of where you're going to go in and they're going to then discuss for you further. Um, I'm going to want to see that you can pay my loan back over the amount of years that if, if you want the money for 10 years, 5 years, 12 years, whatever, I want to see that you can pay it back. So I want to see that you have a plan that takes you into, now obviously you're going to plan a progression. So your cash flows, you're going to want to see fairly detailed your first year, it's like if you're building or establishing, well, we've got to, what are the steps in getting my club or what are the steps in getting it? Well, I've got to find a space, I've got to do this, I've got to, actually no, you've already done that by the time you come to me because you that's, that's in your, your, your place is I have found a space and I have this and I have this. Now, that space may be gone by the time I, you get my loan because there may be, well, you know, I got to have the loan today because that's okay. You have located and you have, you know, you've already started You've already started a lot of that because you're in this class and you have your business plan. But your, your cash flows, you would want to see typically one year, the one year is the most specific. Up, you know, in, in year two, you would want to see, you know, we hope to have this many customers with this, this, this. And then you would also want to say by year by five and by year 10. But those are really speculative. You know it and I know it. You just want to see that you've thought about where is our business growing. Because obviously you're in this to grow the business and I'm going to make you the loan because I want to grow the business and I'm making the loan because I want you to come back to me as you keep growing. And that actually, you know, showing growth and stuff is good. Yeah. Is that answering that? Okay. Uh, so they want to see, uh, they have three years tax returns, three year performance on this. Um, hey, uh, uh, what, just last things, um, personal financial statements of each guarantor and endorser and principal. So the partners are the sole. And the personal financial statement, that's where you put rent, phone bill, personal expenses, and where are you paying that from? How are you doing that? You know, student loans, whatever, you know. And you know what? A very, and, and then it says of guarantors and endorsers, if your parent, on a, on a $10,000 loan, if your parents will, or you have somebody that will co-sign this with you, that's phenomenal. There is, there is nothing wrong at all with a co-signer. In fact, it is quite intelligent to do if you if you have the person to do it now obviously that's you know that depends if you have somebody that will co-sign with you or co-sign for the business that does not in any way take away from the business that you're trying to I mean that that's that's just going to help you get the loan at a better interest rate so there's no point in not if you have somebody that that will that will do that um, I mean, you may not, but you, and obviously your plan needs to be as if you your plan needs to be hopefully sound enough without that but if you do have that um, you know, that's like that's like the 15 year old buying a car or the parents co-sign they may loan the loan it anyway to the 15 year old but it's gonna be a whole lot worse terms than if your parents co-sign so just kind of keep that in mind but I'll still do it in the business name rather than the individual name just so you can um, start establishing credit in the business um, they want um, CPA if, if it's if, if they get if they get over two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which hopefully y'all will be in a couple years they want CPA CPA to prepare and endorse all these and then if you get a really big loan, which, which all of you will need to get, you need key man life insurance for loans over a million dollars, which means if you're, if you're the guy, if you're the guy establishing the business and it's going to hinge on you or like your CD is your voice, they want, um, they want, it, they want insurance on your voice and you know, like those models that have hand insurance and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, and that, anyway, that, that's what they have. The second page of theirs is just, um, listing the assets. Do you have anything? Um, they have a thing on here, relations with the bank. Do your family members already bank with us? A lot of the community banks. That's why you would go to Dunham Springs, you go to New Orleans, you go to California. If mom or dad have good relations here, that, that's, I mean, that's actually on their form. Yes, my parents bank here with them. Um, the different people sign in and then um, you would turn this in and they would call you in for an interview and ask you 10 other questions and, and there you go. Um, all right, let me make sure I've gone over. Okay, that is everything kind of on my list. Um, questions? Yes, sir. You mentioned that you wanted to show growth in your cash flow analysis. Do you want to show that you like hired, say for us, like we hired another cameraman to like help out with stuff, even you, though that's 
You want to show more money coming in. Right. By growth, right. by growth, I mean more money. <laughs> right. You don't want to grow expenses. Ideally, you want to show more money coming in with the same number of people. Because what they're gonna what they're gonna assume is the extra cameraman is you because you're gonna work 60 hours instead of 40 hours. I mean, they, you know, they're gonna. I would I would be very hesitant showing any kind of expenses going up, because your answer is, and and certainly, I mean, I'm sure y'all are aware of this, but don't have anything ridiculous on a loan like we're gonna have maid service the first year. I mean, the maid service is my hand washing whatever it needs to wash. I mean, you know, seriously, because you'll be occasionally you'll get a loan and you're like, you no, know, like these people obviously have no idea what it takes, you know, because it's some just ridiculous, you know, or corporate car or some just absurd something, you know, whatever. So, yeah, no, you, you have no perks. I mean, you, you are, they, they want, we want to know that you are willing to just work your butt off to get this thing going. That you're you do whatever it takes, however long you have to do it, you, you know whatever to get to get the <laughs> to get it going. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you have plans that have like representation included, and how much does that show like the year? No, that yeah, absolutely. That is a very yes, excellent, excellent idea. In fact, um, Mr. Schneider over here would be a very good reference. Um, the <laughs> bank in, at your stage for a new loan. Um, it definitely does not hurt to include letter recommendation or references. They will ask, they may ask for job references, and again, not, 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 not that it even matters where you worked, but was she reliable, did she do what she said she was going to do, that kind of thing, because on a new business, regardless of all of the above, you're still, it's flat out, you're taking a risk, and do you believe in the person enough to make them the loan? But yes, yeah, so that, that's how, absolutely, and you know what, if you put a letter recommendation, and they don't look at it, you hadn't lost anything. But you may, you know, oh, that's just good. Yeah, her professor thinks she, you know, she knows what she's doing or whatever. What yeah. about a board of directors where you show professionals, uh, older people who have experience? Oh, good, good grief, yes, indeed. Yeah, if you have, if you have a board, if you're, if you're doing a business where you can show a board of directors that says it's gonna be run, just keep in mind, a board of directors is gonna have some authority and say so over, over what happens, however. Maybe just advisory. Advi advisory board, yeah, yeah, just yeah, it, absolutely. That is a phenomenal, um, especially especially in a field like music or art, where maybe they don't understand quite as much what your event is, or like how, like what are you doing? Technology? What is electronic? What is that? What is that? Where? But you can show. Oh well, here's this other person, or John Schneider teaches music at Loyola, and he is he is my advisor, and they're like, oh well. I don't know what electronic music is, but I know that he has a good program at Loyola, and so that's a good, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a very excellent, excellent idea. Most important thing, though, is that pro forma showing how you're gonna pay the money back. <laughs> Got to show you're paying the money. Got to show you're paying the money back. And for goodness, in fact, we in the bond world we have what's called a coverage ratio. If we loan you ten thousand dollars, we want to show. And by the way, you know, if you loan you ten thousand, that you're actually paying back 10,000 plus all that interest. So your amount you got to pay back, and you, you can ask the banks, because nobody expects you to have a, although actually there's iPhone apps now that, that do, do, in, do rate, rate calculations, but you can ask the banks for, hey, look, I'm thinking, I mean, and you can even go in to say, look, I'd like, I'd like to apply for a loan for $10,000. Um, can, can you give me a loan application and let me know about what my rate would be? And and they'll and they'll give you this they'll give you this thing that shows you know all that kind of stuff and that's what you plug into your paying the money back deal. But I would I, I would typically we typically like to see that you can pay back one and a half times or at least one and a quarter times. So if you if you need to pay ten thousand or a ten thousand dollar loan, let's say that's fifteen thousand plus interest, it'd be great if you showed you could pay back twenty. You only owe fifteen, but it'd be great if you could pay back twenty just just to show it that way. Well, even if they don't meet their projections, I know they can pay it back. So how does, um, if they apply for a loan, they're taking a risk. Absolutely. And the best way to be prepared for that risk and to actually get up the gumption to go apply for it would be what? A really good plan? A really good plan. A, 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 well, a well thought out plan. A, well, a, a, a good, a professionally, please, for, the, for goodness sakes, do a grammar check. I cannot, that is so annoying when you get a deal and the grammar is incorrect or that, that is just like, you've got to be kidding me, you know? Because again, yeah, but yeah, just a well, a well thought out plan with, uh, with a, defined, a defined goal, a defined mission of this is what I want to do, 
this is why, I, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how it's going to make money so that I can pay you back. Are there types of questions that you've heard that loan officers ask that are a little bit tricky, a little bit kind of off the topic, but just to get a reaction from you? Yeah, yeah, like, like yeah. Kind of well, like, I, you know, I played keyboard when I was, when I was six, like the synthesizers. That, that's kind of, like, I could play at your, at your thing. Well, yeah, I have, I have a keyboard. I mean, because so, you know, especially every every loan officer in, in the music field, everybody used to play some instrument, and they're going to get off to some. And your answer is, well, you know, I, that's you know, I, I'd love for you to come and, and hear my event. But yeah, they're they're going to ask you, you know. It also kind of depends. This is bad. It just kind of depends on what kind of mood I'm in today. Sometimes you're just in a really like sadistic mood, and you're like, so. I mean, you know, just not really. But, so after um, the same victory, you granted loans, right? Do what? After the same victory, you granted more loans. That's right. You just get right. The same one, you're right. Exactly. 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 Now, I will, I will say this. Use the whole New Orleans. See, the other thing with New Orleans, New Orleans is kind of cool. It's like Nashville with country music. Oh, that's kind of cool. New Orleans is, I mean, New Orleans is a good music town, you know? And so the fact that you're doing an artsy thing in New Orleans, a little more likely you're, it's going to succeed than if you were in Cleveland. Because nobody anticipates Cleveland. You know, I mean, you're saying you kind of. You know I'm saying. You, I mean, you got a little. You you use your positives. I will say also dress appropriately when you go to when you go to the when you you're going into you're going into their world. So make your documents conform. Make your dress conform. I mean, you're an artist, and everybody understands that. So obviously, you, you know, nobody expects you. You know, but just you know, you want to you want to have you know look professional and that kind of thing because. Are you going to invite the loan officer to your show? Do what? Are you going to oh, absolutely. You, you want that loan officer to feel that, that he, I mean, you, you want them to feel they're doing a cool thing. Because they're, especially on the smaller amounts of money, the under 25000 most of the time a loan officer has complete authority to write the check for up to $25,000, most of the time. They'll say just, and that's just if they think, now they, they'll have to go to some boss and say, you know, just kind of, hey, by the way, they're doing a studio and whatever, and the boss may go, hmm, what? But most of the time, you know, most of the time, but, but oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you want, you want the loan officer, because here's the deal. Hopefully, you're establishing a relationship with, and again, I mean, the big banks are good, too. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to offend the big banks, but um, especially community banks want to establish a relationship with somebody. Because it's kind of cool, I mean, if your club is good, and like I, I mean, if it, if it becomes the hottest thing in New Orleans, and I know I can get tickets to it on Friday night, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? And that's like a, hey man, I finance the, you know, whatever club. And it, I mean seriously, or hey, that's that they 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 did a video for whatever artist, and I did that. I mean, I financed that. I mean, I do this for the YMCA. We were in the, we they just had the grand opening, and we were we were working out in the wines. I'm like, oh man, this is really nice. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, yep, finance that. You know, I mean, you kind of get this like, you know. Kind of, it's just kind of. I did this. You do. You have you have a little you have a little sense of kind of ownership in the. Yeah, man. Yeah. You like you like you go into this festival and you're like, yeah, yeah. Real quick. Do we have? Um, I'm just curious what all the projects are. Can y'all just can we go around real quick and just tell them what? Just real quick, what what your project is? That's on the back. Okay. Artist management. Okay. Like an agent. Okay. Be, be, be prepared to, if it's not an agent, what is, what is, how is it different? I mean, just be prepared. Yes, ma'am. Okay, again, music management. Music management people are going to think you're an agent. You're going to be Britney Spears' agent. If that's not it, then how is it different? Okay, yes? A restaurant? A restaurant? We can relate. However, I will tell you, restaurants are the highest percentage of failed loans of any kind of loan possible to do. So. Your restaurant, need what, what kind of restaurant? It's going to be like a pizza kind of restaurant. Okay, okay. Like a pizza restaurant or it is going to be a pizza, pizza restaurant? restaurant? Okay, okay. Because it doesn't, if it's going to be, I'll tell you this, if it's going to be like something, if it's going to be like a Papa John's, then I'm going to say, well, why wouldn't I just go to Papa John's? So just, I mean, just, I'm just telling you to let you know, you're, you're going to, a pizza, a restaurant, you're going to have, like, it, you, you, need, you need to have a really good plan, I mean a really specific, this is how my pizza is going to be different. And it may be where it's located, it may be your atmosphere, but restaurants are really hard to do. Not trying to, I mean, but they're also the most recognizable. If you can convince me that it's a, you know, if you can convince me that you got something a little bit different or that's kind of cool or it's a New Orleans kind of deal, you know, but just keep that in mind. Yes? 
a, a regional tour for your band. Cool. Excellent. CD. Yep. Yep. Artist management. Artist management. Okay. Okay. Are you are you in the band? Are you you're managing it? Okay. Have you done that? Have you have you managed? You and okay. All right. Then 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 in your case, you're not putting it together. You are I. You are a manager, and you have been a manager, and you are. So in your case, if I'm you, I'm not a new. I'm not a new business. You're, 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 if I'm, if I'm you, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, because for, for you, like your, your last three years, your, your financial statements, you need to be able to show, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but if you've done it for a year, then you do have a year of financial statements. Because if you can show financial statements for the past, you've, you're, you're a step ahead. We're not necessarily, we don't really need, we've been pretty self-sufficient, been able to yep. fund everything that we've been Fabulous. So Excellent. You know, yeah, in fact, on, on that, he's been able to finance it himself. You're going to, and all of you have financed something of your business yourself. You're going to show every penny you put into it and wh where it went and all that and how you've been sufficient. If you, have any, if you have any amount of time that you have been in the business where you're not a new business anymore, way good. Yes? Do a small scale music festival showcasing up and coming non traditional uh, New Orleans artists? Very good. That is the most succinct, that excellent. Excellent. Whatever you just said, write it down because that, that's your little, that's your little, very succinct, very, he, he's doing a festival. I got that. Non-traditional artist, got that. New Orleans, got that. Very good, like, succinct deal. Yes. Booking. booking for, okay, booking. Yeah, good, good. Artist management. Artist management. Now, is this, artist management, what's the difference in artist management and being an agent? Well, what's your definition of an agent? What do you think? Like, I'm, like I, I represent... I, he sings and I represent him and I, I, I get him booked in his club. That's a booking agent. That's a booking agent? Okay, see, and just to let you know, most people don't understand these, all these kind of terms, so just kind of be, be prepared for questions like, well, what exactly is that, you know, whatever. It also implies that if you're, an, if you're a manager and, you have to, and you're not an agent, you have to get an agent. So you want to, as you're starting out, you're a manager and agent, right? There's no, you don't want to hire somebody or pay off part of the money to somebody yeah, and y'all just yeah, just be prepared to explain to to uh, to me. I mean, I'm I'm on the music commission, and I'm I'm what I wasn't clear on that. So think about the banker who, you know, whatever. Yes. Design company, Design company. designing what? Um, website and okay. Okay, very good for for labels, artists, what? Okay, late which all of the above. Okay, and your contingency plan plan is doing whatever websites need to be designed. Right, so you got you have that. That's what I want to do. But if I have to, I'll design the, whatever. Yeah, yes. Oh yeah, your 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 uh, venue. Yes. Okay. Yes. Publishing company. We can we can sheet music or. Exploiting copyright. Okay. Okay. That's that that's that's doing creative because sheet music. The other thing you got to watch if it's if it's something like the sheet music industry. Like you know, like the CD industry is shrinking. You got to you got to make sure in the industry, kind of anybody who does music loans is going to know there's areas of the music like CDs that are shrinking. So you got to know that you got to think that they. I wouldn't I wouldn't bring that out to them if they don't bring it up. But if you say, well, you know, I heard the CD, I heard the music business is shrinking, and you would say, well, parts of it are, but this is how I'm going to do it because blah blah blah. And publishing isn't shrinking, and sheet music is only about eight percent, five percent of that. <laughs> <coughs> okay. What? Is, okay. See, I don't. And I. When you say publishing, I'm gonna assume you're doing sheet music that I played when I was little. Okay. And, and let me tell you this: the digital, the digital people. I was not even technologically savvy enough to have a PowerPoint. I mean, I'm. You've got to assume that. You've got to assume. Oh, and by the way, I, let me say that too. Whatever form they want it in, if they want it written out on this form, it's written out on this form. It's not emailed. I mean, you, you can ask them, can I email it to you or whatever, but if they want it written out on this form, they mean write it out on this form. They don't mean, well, let me, let me scan it and email it to your BlackBerry. I don't have a BlackBerry. I don't have an iPhone. I read this, and I'll have to print it. And if I have to take your email and then print it rather than getting it like I wanted it, well, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. I mean, you want to make it as easy. Or the flip side is, would you like that? If, if, they, if they ask for it paper, I would paper, electronic, call and make sure they got it. I mean, you know, you just want to, you know, make sure they got it. Yes? Um, a five-week summer camp that teaches um, the arts to inner-city school-age children. 
Excellent. Okay, lots of grants available for that too. You need to. You need to. She, she needs to watch the. But very, very good, succinct deal. Lots of grants available for that. Even like from the little theaters and that kind of stuff. So you, you, yours would be much more grant oriented than loan oriented, I would think. Yeah. And you also need prepared five weeks. What are you gonna do the rest of the year? Okay, yeah, that, so you just be, just be prepared. If, it's, if, you, if you're doing anything seasonal, be prepared to know what are you doing in the off season. Yes? Can you do your production when you specialize in puppet production? Puppet production, excellent, like the Muppets. Yes. Okay, because you know that's good, yeah. <laughs> no, and people, people get that, and, and you know, where are you doing? Well, that's excellent, excellent. yes. Um, it's like a product slash service that offers um, young party goers a chance to like, get into clubs for less cost and greater ease. Okay, like an entertainment book for clubs? Kind of. Okay, you would need to be very, your, yours, I got it, very succinct, very good. You would need to really hone in on being able to explain what that is. Because that's going to be kind of, I mean, not, not that a wristband isn't, you know, nobody understands that, but kind of like f f relate that to, like I buy a wristband at Jazz Fest, except I can it's go like a bunch a of, or something. A, very, yeah, just kind of hone in. Yeah, see, excellent. That's perfect, perfect. You need to talk to him because he's, foreign, foreign, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, yours, yep. 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 Right, right, right. In the back? <laughs> Music. Okay. Together, y'all are? Okay. Um, booking agent and manager, I am, and okay. I'm looking to grow my company. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those of you who are doing it, excellent. Yes. Okay. We got it. That's a good one. That's a good one, too. Yes. Hey, uh, software and, and actually, let me, on that note, if you're not sure, or, you know, if you need to hone it, I mean, you know, talk about it and get it, you know, if, if like, you know, like, or if you're like, if you're thinking, well, I can't, you know, let me, let me think of some options. And having options is fine, too. Well, I haven't, you know, it's either going to be this or this. I, I'd like for it to be this, but it might be that. That's okay, but just still, still have like a plan, you know, like a, So, Richard, yeah. you went to law school. If, yes. If these guys, you know, if there are a lot of people here want to go to law school, mm -hmm. what could they do to prepare something to show, with like this, maybe, some kind of plan? Would that be useful, do you think? Show your law school uh, people, uh, the enrollment people, that you are able to do these things. Should you show anything like that? I think that would be helpful. Uh, to, to get into law school? Yeah. It depends <laughs> on. LSAT, right? Yeah, I mean, well, it dep depends on what law school. Like an LSU, for example, goes on grade point average and LSAT score, period. Doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter a lot. Lo Loyola, however, is a lot more of an inclusive package of like things like that do matter more. So it kind of depends on, although having a business plan for that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with going to law school. No. That's kind of almost a competing, if I don't get into law school, I'm going to do this oh, yeah. a little bit. But, but I mean, it's not bad, but it's just, yeah. Yes? A uh, software company that designs and develops uh, audio recording software. Programs. Okay, okay, very good. Club? Club. Got it. I'm the lead singer of a band, and we're going on tour and putting out a record. Excellent, excellent. Be prepared to sing something for them. Okay. I mean, I'm seriously, they'd be like, oh, really, what do y'all sing or whatever? Sure. Or if you have a CD, have the CD and just, I'd like for, you know, because honestly, with that kind of stuff, it'll be, well, do I think they're good? Right. <laughs> I think. Well, I mean, yeah, you, I, I, I wouldn't, anybody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just come in and burst out at the bank, but, you know, it's a bit, you know, see, <laughs> anyway, yes. I'm, uh, I'm actually trying to get in and pick uh, law school and also figure out how to pay for it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so not good exactly luck. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Video production. Video production. Video production. Okay. And you, are you? Also, creative video production. What? Creative video production? Yes. And if I were you and you've done all this, I would show, in fact, any, anything, by the way, anything that you're doing that's kind of unofficial, like you would be the videographer for the whatever, for, you know, I mean, anything, anything that you've been doing that you can more formalize, make a title out of, you know, you don't want to be ridiculous, but Rather than, rather than, yeah, man, I shot a couple of videos for Dr. Snyder's class, you would want to go, well, you know, I was the videographer for my senior level, blah, blah, blah. you know, you just, anything that you have that's kind of been good, you know, that you can, anyway. All right, anything else? I think I, I've, it's been kind of, kind of scattered-ish, but it's, the process is kind of scattered-ish, so, you know. Anything else? Let's give Richard a big hand. Next week, uh, if you haven't handed in your marketing plan, try to get it to me by the end of the week so I can leave you over the weekend. 
Uh, and next week, bring in your financial plan, beginning seven.